What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. It's been a minute since the last video that I posted, but I am super happy to be filming this video today because it's something I've been wanting to do for a while and it's just a really fun one. I'm actually in Devin's studio and I'm going to be filming the whole process of me DIYing a tile table. I can't say this enough. I'm super excited to get this project started. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it and let me walk you through all the products that I have to get started. So I've never worked with tiles before but I knew that I did want some that were colored and glazed already because I feel like painting the tiles and doing all that is just more work and these tiles that I found online were actually the same price or just about the same price as just plain white ones that I have seen a lot of people paint and this was actually like the perfect color for what I was looking for. So this is a 12 by 12 mosaic sheet in the color mink. So it's kind of like more of an ashy beige taupey tile color and like this is exactly what I was looking for because I did want something neutral that will just match with any type of decor. Even if I switch it up, this table should match with everything. So I will go ahead and link these down below um, in the description so you guys can check them out. That 12 by 12 sheet was only $3, which is actually a really good deal for like colored tile like that. And we are basically just covering a square table, so it's pretty straightforward and the measurements are actually perfect for my table that I thrifted, which is the IKEA LAC table because the legs are basically two inches. So the squares fit perfectly. So if I can give like a little pro tip, if you pick up any of the IKEA LAC series, like the console table, coffee table, or the side table, getting two inch squares, like a sheet that I have that's 12 by 12 will make your life so much easier. And this is the Ikea LAC table that I thrifted on Facebook Marketplace. I actually got this for $5. I've been seeing so many of these on Marketplace or Craigslist going for about that price. They usually retail for $10 new, but of course if you could find a used one for cheaper, you should definitely just go for that. Let me show you how simple using this sheet makes it. So that already covers like more than a fourth of the table. And it's super easy because it is like loosely, not loosely, but the glue is pretty like flexible. So when I do glue these down, all I have to do is bend it. And that perfectly makes like um, a nice groove for me to fill in with grout. So it is super easy just to use scissors and cut through this glue. And I highly suggest just mapping out the tiles for your table before you get started um, placing the glue because it's just gonna make everything easier for you and it's better to stay organized so you don't get lost in the sauce when you start laying everything down. And these five products are what I purchased at Lowe's. So we have the tile adhesive right here, the grout, the trowel, the float, and the sponge. So the trowel is going to spread the adhesive, the float is going to clean up the grout, and then I'm going to use the sponge after to wipe away the excess grout. And I believe all of these products were around $40 altogether from Lowe's. And I will go ahead and link everything in the description as well. So for the product, the tiles, and the table, it was all under $100. So if this works out, it'll be perfect. If not, you will learn from my mistakes. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get into it and just get started. So to start, you gotta lay the adhesive. So just taking the trowel, I tried to smooth out a thin but even coat all over the table. I did end up having to use another tool just to get those sparse areas. Then I used the notch side to make some texture in so that the tile will stick to it. And then I just started to lay the tiles and if you notice that left corner of the first sheet was cut off just so that the second sheet once folded over will create that left side. The third sheet, all six rows will be on the tabletop and for the fourth that front row is going to fold over and create the front side. 
So I'm really glad that I was able to get laying down the tiles on the top for y'all but my camera was literally on its last legs and died so I couldn't film everything but I basically repeated the whole process of laying the adhesive and then making little grooves in it and then laying the tiles and two hours later this is what we are working with now. So this did take me a bit of time, mostly because of the legs having four sides and there's four of them. So having to separately like glue and place the tiles on the legs did take a little bit more time. But we are just going to let this dry overnight and then I will go ahead and grout it tomorrow. It's the next day and the table has fully dried. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the grouting process. This is it right here. I'm just gonna follow the directions on the top. I'm gonna mix the water and then we'll apply it. Let it sit for 15 to 30 minutes and then wipe it off. And then after that, we just let the table dry again and it should be finished. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera and then we'll get into it. Not gonna lie, this grouting process was definitely trial and error for me with lots of errors. Um, what I can say is that you definitely will want to pick up a float. This tool makes spreading the grout as even as possible so much easier than using any other tool. Of course, if you don't have the budget for it, you can definitely use other things like a credit card, but this really does help smooth it out as evenly as possible and get into all those little lines. So that's basically what I did. I just smoothed over all the product and then pushed it into the lines and continued that whole process through the sides as well. Okay, so few things. I ran out of grout. This is definitely a bummer because I really wanted to finish this today. But this one pound container actually did cover the top and the sides for the most part. I did kind of get down on a couple of the legs, but I basically just wanted to even out as much as I could with this tub and then I'm just going to have to pick up some more tomorrow to finish the legs. But I really was like obsessing over trying to get this as perfect as possible. I think the issue with this was, it ended up being my fault because I actually mixed a bit too much water. I was just kind of like eyeballing it and then I think the consistency was too smooth. It needed to be a little bit thicker because it was really, really hard to fill like little air bubbles um, because it was a little too smooth and watery. I had to like keep going over and over and over it. So yeah, I'm just gonna let this dry and then we'll wipe off the top and see how it looks. I actually ended up waiting about 40 minutes before I wiped off the top because I did over mix and it was super watery when I was working with it. But this ended up working out to my advantage because I was able to re-go over the sides that were uneven and flawed and smooth them out with the sponge. And this was only because I over mixed the grout. Usually it dries within 15 to 30 minutes. Okay, day three, we got a new tub of grout and we're ready to go. I'm honestly pretty happy with how this top layer dried. There are some little spots um, where there were some little air bubbles. So I am gonna take some of this, try to fix that. But the main priority is obviously like filling in the rest of the legs. I did kind of like wipe off some of that grout from yesterday, so there's a little bit of residue. But see, I did this one side, so I'm hoping that only one is enough. Let's pray that this works, and I I'm feeling good. I'm hoping we can just get it all done today so we can put it out tomorrow and just be finished. I just mixed it. The consistency is definitely way thicker than last night because I only put the suggested amount of water and not anymore, and I think this is gonna work out way better. It's gonna be so much easier to fill. Probably not as many air bubbles, I'm hoping, and we are just gonna go with it. 
So I just repeated the grouting process with the thicker grout and I started to use my bare fingers, which I quickly found was a mistake. So I threw on a glove and then went to work and basically laid the grout with my hands. So this actually was a lot easier because I really couldn't see all the sides of the table. So just feeling the spaces that needed to be filled and then going back over them with the float was what worked best for me. But I was getting nervous because I was starting to run out of grout. All right, update, the table's done. I've grouted all the legs and every other place that I missed. I was able to make this second tube stretch and work, but honestly, I wish I would have had a third just to perfect some areas, but I think because of the way that the table is going to be on the floor, the angle it's at and everything, it should be okay once it's cleaned up and everything, but um, these were one pound. So for a table like this, two to two and a half pounds of grout is what was needed. So keep that in mind. That's actually more than I was expecting because this table isn't very big, but I do think it was because each of the legs obviously have four sides. So that took a bit more work to fill in all of these lines on the front and then like these thicker lines on the sides definitely needed more to completely fill in those grooves but just gonna let this sit for another like 30 minutes and then we'll wipe it down and let it dry here i am again cleaning off the grout except opposite to last time i did have issues getting it off as you can see right here because i got distracted and let it sit longer than 30 minutes so it started to dry and it dried very quickly and it wasn't as forgiving as the first time unfortunately but regardless on the fourth day we finally have a finished tile table I am overall pretty happy with the outcome, even though it wasn't perfect. It is a DIY and she's perfect to me. Also given the price, the work was 100% worth it. Here's how I have the table styled in my living room. This was actually one of the main reasons I wanted a tile table so that it could double as a plant stand. And also the placement between my chair and sofa means that whoever's sitting can use it. And now my plant is up off the floor so my baby pup cannot get into it. And that's gonna be a wrap on my DIY tile table video. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did making it. And if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Please let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see from me. It has been a little tricky for me to figure out what videos to post, whether it's another DIY, a haul, anything beauty related, I'd love to get any and all feedback. Until next time, I will catch you guys later. Bye.